The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Technology's Cooking Experience. Hello and welcome again to a new episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience where today c'est le carnival and we're going to celebrate by making some traditional French Canadian dishes that are warming your winter heart and bring back lots of fun memories. The first thing that we're going to make today is we're going to make some soft buns which we're going to follow by some smoked pork hock beans and we're going to finish off with a traditional pudding shomar. So let's get started today here at Seasons Pharmacy. Thank you so much. Thank you to Eastlink Community TV for giving me this awesome experience. First things first, guys, I would like to teach you about blooming yeast. Blooming yeast is very easy but can be seen as a complicated task as some recipes just say throw it in the pot, some recipes say let it bloom, some say use fresh. Here is the trick of the trick. Yeast is a bacteria that needs food to grow. It needs a warm place to live and it needs moisture to, to bloom. So what I tend to do is on top of the regular recipe, if it says that I need yeast, I take a bowl and I always add one teaspoon of sugar. Why sugar? Because sugar feeds the yeast. I go to my sink and I get myself some warm water, preferably 98 degrees, but if you take the palm of your, this part of your hand right here and you put it under water and you feel for it to be, just to say that it feels like a little needle going in, that's the perfect temperature. If it's too hot and your skin turns red instantly, it's too hot, it's gonna kill your yeast. So I have one teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna put the approximation of one cup of warm water. Then from there I take a spoon and I stir the sugar in the water to dissolve. This way it happens to feed the yeast faster. Now I've measured out one tablespoon of water as well. And so what I do is I just gently sprinkle it over top of the water, trying to make sure that I cover all of the water space. And I take my spoon again, I do the sides, and I just give it a quick stir. Now don't try to break anything, just try to make sure that you get all the yeast particles off of your spoon because you want that stuff in there. Oh, she's being tricky. So with this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to let this put on the side and I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes and it'll grow. Now, once, once it's grown, it looks like this. It'll puff up, it'll be airy, it's going to look like It'll move like jello, and that's perfect to go. This soft bun recipe is quite common, and we would eat this bun, particularly on a Sunday afternoon, or if somebody was making a soup, or a potage, or a stew. This is something that families would make. I know my family would make it often. So here we go, nice and easy, no big problems. Got three cups of all-purpose flour here, which I use John Hayhoe, which is brought to you by K2 Milling, um, Ontario. Then here I have a third cup of sugar. Mix that in there. I'm going to pop in, crack one egg. Now, when you're cracking eggs, guys, always make sure to crack it in a separate container before you dump it into your uh, product because if you drop a shell in there it's really hard to get a shell out of flour it, it's just tough there are tricks to the trade but in my opinion it's just not worth it so in here I have my flour and my sugar I've got my egg I have five tablespoons of melted butter 
and I have one and a half cups of warm milk. Now why the warm milk? The warm milk is going to help the dough uh, create its gluten a little bit faster. Now I'm doing mine today in a bowl, but you are more than welcome to use a stand mixer and put everything in the mixer at the same time. Run it on two or medium for at least eight minutes pull it off the dough hook and stuff. But I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand because it is that, that simple. So I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna mix my flour and my sugar together and then I'm gonna create a well just like you would if you were making pasta. I'll put in my egg in the middle. I'll put my butter in the middle. I'll put my milk in the middle. And then I'll put in my yeast. I try to keep a little bit of extra flour on the side as this starts off to be a wet dough. Now, a wet dough is not hard to deal with. It's just, it can be frustrating if you're not prepared. So make sure that you're prepared. Have yourself some extra flour on the side. You know, that way you can put it on your hands while you're rolling. Always make sure to start off with clean hands. Look, there's my measuring cup. Always start off with clean hands before you start any projects. Okay, so I got this all to the side. You see inside my bowl here how it's all ready to go. So I'm going to take my spoon and just do a turn, get most of it started in here to the flour, nice and quick. The sugar, the milk, and the butter is what will make the bread soft. So see here, you got yourself a quick, looks like doughy, looks almost like pancake batter, right? So from there, you're going to add a little bit more flour. I'm going to add at least three quarters of a cup. Do it in stages, guys. Don't just throw it all in because once you put it in, then you gotta add some more flour to it, more liquid to it. You don't wanna do that. Once you get all of your flour incorporated and it looks like a dough, then you're gonna let it sit. I've added about another cup. So the recipe calls for five cups of flour, but you start off with three. That way your yeast, your sugar, your butter, your milk are all incorporated and it's not lumpy. So as this has got more incorporated, you'll see it'll create a ball, a sticky ball, which is fine, which is what you want. And from there, we're just gonna let it sit. So here you go. We're gonna let this sit in proof. And when we come back, we can get our beans into our crock pot and then we'll be able to form up our balls. Margie's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> Welcome back to Mama G's cooking experience and today we are celebrating Le Carnival de Quebec. First I want to take two seconds to thank Marie Sos for this beautiful apron in which she created for today's episode. Traditionally our parents and our grandparents used to take beans and cook them overnight. They would use such pots like this, they would use clay pots, ceramic pots, they would put all the ingredients in there overnight and they would leave it on top of the wood stove for the beans to absorb and for the fat to melt from the pork and this would be a beautiful product at the end for the morning, the next morning. But today's day we don't have that kind of time so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our Instapot. Now, the key ingredient to a really good hearty baked bean is a pork hock. The pork hock is the, the part of the pig at the bottom of the foot, which is very meaty, lots of collagen comes out of there, and, and you want to keep the skin on it as it has a lot of the flavor profile in which you are looking for. 
So what have I done with this one? Why does it look darker? This one I have taken over to Torini's and I've had them uh, soak it in brine and then smoke it so that I have a nice flavor of my smoked bean, for my smoked beans. So I'm going to take my, my pork hock and put it at the bottom base of my Instapot so that way all of the fat melts up and goes through the bean before it goes up to the top of the pot to just sit there. Now as you may have heard in my show before, the reason why we use pork is it's so high in vitamin B, uh, which is in the form of thiamine. Thiamine, I believe that's how it's pronounced. But you want that kind of stuff. It increases your muscle performance and it helps prevent depression. Honestly, there was a uh, there was a bunch of ads done in the 80s as to pork is the new white meat. Remember that? I remember that. So the beans in which are traditionally used are navy beans. So I've taken my package of navy beans and I've soaked them in hot water and I've rinsed them out twice. And so then they're soft without being too hard because you're not going to want to do a too hard bean. It'll take too long and it'll create you to be gassy. It's not worth it. So I'm taking my beans here. I'm going to strain them out and then I'm going to put the beans in inside my uh, Instapot. I don't recommend using the water in which your beans are soaking from. Just use some fresh water. Okay, so I've got all my beans out. Look, they're nice. Some of the skins are starting to come off. That's when you know it's good. I know that there's some people out there who soak their beans in a baking soda solution. Uh, uh, it's a myth. There, it, baking soda will not stop you from farting. I'm sorry. It is not true. So we're going to take our beans, put them on top of our pork here. This is a nice, simple recipe. Quite easy. Everybody in the family loves them. My family likes to eat beans and toast. It's great. So in here, I have my one package, one pound of bean. I have my pork hock. I'm adding one liter of pork broth, bone broth, in which I made in an earlier episode. Now, I am going to add some maple sugar. You can get maple sugar here at Seasons Pharmacy, and we sell it from La Sucurie Seguin, which is, uh, I believe, in Werner. And uh, so instead of using brown sugar, I'm going to use maple sugar. So I'm going to do the equivalent of three tablespoons of this beautiful granulated maple sugar. I'm a liar. I'm going to put four because I love that flavor, and it goes great. Okay, so we've got that in there. Good old maple syrup. Now, there's two kinds of maple syrup. You have fancy and you have blackstrap. Blackstrap molasses is a little bitter. So I would use blackstrap molasses for making whole wheat bread. Uh, it's the only real function that I've seen that it, it tastes good. So in here, I'm going to dump about three tablespoons of fancy molasses. and some tomato puree. You ever notice at the bottom of the cap, there's like a little pin thing here? That's so that you can pierce your hole. Ta -da! In here, I'm gonna add about two, three tablespoons of tomato puree. You want the tomato puree in there to bind the liquid, the fibers from the beans and the fat from the pork. So we have all this here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another liter of, uh, sorry, two liters of water to this and I'm going to put it into my Instapot. Now that should cook easily for 45 minutes on high, high pressure and you'll have a beautiful product that would normally take six to eight hours. There's that. You can put herbs. You can put whatever you want at this point in here. But I am a traditionalist where I would like to keep things 
nice and simple. The last ingredient in which I'm going to add is two teaspoons of kosher salt, and that's it. I'm going to slide it over here to my Instapot. I'm going to plop it in, turn on the lid, and then down here we have, it says beans chili. There we go. Walk away from it and it's good to go. I would like to show you how to finish off the buns. They've proofed long enough at this point. The dough is proofed long enough. I've got a bowl of flour. I've got my wet towel over my bread. And I'm just going to show you a little bit. I don't have a microwave, so I warm everything in the oven. So, using your pastry brush, you're going to make sure that your baking dish is nice and buttered, nice and greasy buttered. You can use pork fat, you can use beef tallow, you can use olive oil, you can use unsalted butter, but I, am a, I have a big love for regular salted butter. So you have your dough, take your hands, cover them in flour, go into your dough, it's nice and soft, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the top here, it's nice and soft, you're going to gather the sides, see it formed a nice ball, you're going to form this into 12. And look, you're just going to pick it up, you're going to roll it in your hands, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, got some nice soft, you're going to place it in, and that's what you're going to do for the rest of your pot. When we come back, you're going to see me finish up the buns, and I'm going to create a pudding shomar. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Hi, welcome back to Mama G's Cooking Experience brought to you by Eastlink Community TV. I'm here at Seasons and to finish off our Le Carnival episode, I'm going to show you a quick and easy family fun recipe that everybody loves and your kids can make. So, you're going to grab yourself a deep dish pie tin. You're going to get yourself some melted butter. You're going to grease it all up, making sure that you get the sides really, really well. Okay? In your bowl, you're going to take yourself, you're going to do one and a half cups of flour. Then we're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. When measuring with regular spoons, make sure that things are flat. Uh, if you do a heaping, then it could be twice and it would just, you'll have like that tangy taste in the back of your mouth. So in here I have flour, baking soda, I'm going to add one cup of sugar, but I'm going to add maple sugar. The reason why I'm going to add maple sugar is because it has a nicer flavor and it's easier for the body to absorb and to digest. So I've got one, one, and one. Again, making sure that it's all nice and flat. There we go, add that to there, nice and easy. We're going to put in our butter, mix it all up, get the chunks out. This is very quick, very easy, cost effective. You can use brown sugar, white sugar, you can use whatever kind of sugar you have and that'll be fine. Okay, to our cake batter I'm going to add <clears throat> excuse me, a quarter cup of butter. Now I've melted it. 
just so that you can see how it's, it's a lot easier to mix it up, okay? Then I'm gonna add my milk here, room temperature. I'm just using 2% Farquhar's milk here. There we go, nice little mix. You kinda want it. It's gonna look like crepe batter. Use a whisk just to get the chunks out. Okay, it's gonna thicken up. Get your pan. Pour your batter in your pan. Now you can also mix this right in the pan. You don't have to dirty a bowl. Okay, then for your sauce, which is the caramel base and the oh so love sauce of uh, pudding shomar. In a bowl, I have measured out one cup of brown sugar and one cup of maple sugar. Now, the original recipe calls for one cup of brown sugar and one cup of maple syrup. Now, I'm not gonna be using the maple syrup. I'm gonna use the, brown, the maple sugar. So I'm gonna break up all my maple, all my uh, brown sugar, because you know how you get the chunks sometimes? You just want to break it up and pour it on top of everything here. The same thing, and you're gonna say, Gates, that's so much sugar. Why, why would you use so much? It's just the way the recipe goes, guys. That's why people love it so much. And you want the sugar to caramelize once it's cooking as well. Okay, so I got all that beautiful sugar put on top. Get your boiling water happening in your kettle, okay? Take your measuring cup, one cup of hot boiling water. You're gonna drizzle it over your sugar and your cake mix. Do not mix it, okay? Just drizzle it over. Let it dissolve a little bit. This is what's gonna create your caramel sauce. From here, guys, you're gonna take your pie, your, your container, you're gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and you're gonna let it cook for 45 minutes. If you feel, once 45 minutes is up, that it's still too liquidy, this is the type of cake that you can leave in the oven until you are completely satisfied. So, put this in the oven, use your toothpick to make sure that it's nice coming out clean and dry, and then you're gonna see that it's perfect, you're gonna pull it out. And we'll be right back with the finishing of the beans, the buns, and the pudding shomar. So now that our buns have come out of the oven, what we're gonna do is you're just gonna wanna take your pastry brush with a little bit of melted butter and just butter the tops of them. They're nice and soft. You want the butter on the outside, that way you don't need to have it all on the inside. Right? Looks delicious. I've taken the beans out of the Instapot. Now, pro tip guys, if you feel like your beans are not cooked long enough, just put them back in. You can put them in for another hour or you can take some of your liquid out. So we put in three, li three liters. You could put yourself an easy two and a half liters and then you'll be fine. You'll have just as great of a product. I've also taken out the pudding shomar. It's got a nice, beautiful, golden colored sauce on the bottom. And so I've plated up the beans here. I've got some nice chunks of the meat. I'm gonna dish out. As you can see, all the brown sugar and the sauce went to the bottom. The maple sauce went to the bottom. You're gonna pull some out. You're gonna put it in your bowl. This is where you want all of this beautiful caramel sauce on top. Put that there. Now, my grandma used to put a little bit of cream on the top. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of cream on the top because nothing says heart health like cream and sugar. So we've got our beautiful dessert here. We've got some beautiful smoked baked beans here. A nice soft bun, comes apart, so beautiful. 
dip it into your bread, and there you go. Thank you to East Link and to Seasons Culinary and Pharmacy for this episode of C'est le Carnival of Mama G's Cooking Experience. I hope you had a great time today, and I look forward to seeing you the next episode. Have a great day.